So the Beatles invade America in 1964 and the British invasion follows and America took a little while to catch up. One of the bands that that really seemed to be the equal to the Beatles for a short while and in some people's eyes was the Beach Boys. We'll talk about them in a minute. But the early part of the 60s, this really allowed uh, American black music, R&B music to sort of catch up and Motown, Motown really came out with some great stuff and Atlantic Records will be talking about Motown and Atlantic more next week. But Motown with the Supremes and Temptations and Four Tops, Atlantic with Wilson Pickett, Aretha Franklin, Otis Redding, really got off the ground at this time. Uh, the Young Rascals, uh, an East Coast group, very soulful white group, were very big in the early part of the 60s. But aside from that, it really took a few years for the American groups to get off the ground with the West Coast groups such as Jimi Hendrix, Jefferson Airplane, Carlos Santana, Janis Joplin, The Doors, Creedence Clearwater. But these groups all came around a little bit later, after 66 or 67 or so. But back to the Beach Boys, the one group that did, that did challenge the Beatles for a while. The, the Beach Boys got together. Beach Boys got together in 1961. Three brothers, Brian Wilson, the genius Brian Wilson, and his two brothers, Dennis and Carl. Carl, quite a good singer and guitar player. Dennis Wilson was not a musician, but later on learned to play the drums well enough to tour with the band, although supposedly he never played dr the drums on any recordings. So Brian Wilson played mostly bass guitar. Carl Wilson played guitar and Dennis Wilson on the drums. They also added their cousin Mike Love on vocals which caused lots of problems later on with many lawsuits. Also many people felt that that he was one of the weakest singers in the band although he insisted on singing lead in many songs. Um, Mike Love and a fifth member Al Jardine a friend of theirs who still tours and actually tours with a few people who live in Prescott. So we have the three Wilson brothers, Mike Love and Al Jardine, got their start doing surf music. And they were very influenced by their far father, Murray Wilson, who was a very controlling dad. And supposedly, Brian Wilson did have many mental problems. Supposedly, a lot of these mental problems were brought on by abuse he'd suffered, mental abuse he'd suffered from his father, possibly physical abuse also. So the Beach Boys originally were just doing kind of corny surf music. Surfing USA, car songs, little, um, yeah, what's that Thunderbird song? She'll have fun, fun, fun till her daddy takes her T bird away, little deuce coop. Uh, but then got more serious as Brian Wilson came into his own as a, as a songwriter and a producer and an arranger. So the, but the Beach Boys could never really challenge the Beatles because they didn't have. A couple of things. They didn't have two geniuses in the band who would really work on it off of each other. They really only had the one genius of Brian Wilson. But Brian Wilson had a fatal flaw. He did have some mental problems and just did not want to tour and appear live. He just wanted to stay at home and work on his songs and work on his, on, in the studio. And also the Beach Boys were just not much of a live band. They were just not, a couple of them were just not very good musicians, including Dennis Wilson, the drummer, and Mike Love, the singer. So they never had the quality of musicianship, the band musicianship, and working together as a band that the Beatles had. And they never had the quality of songwriting, unfortunately, although Brian Wilson certainly wrote some great songs, just not that huge list of over 100 songs that Lennon and McCartney had. But the story, as the story goes, in 1965, the Beatles put out Rubber Soul, and Brian Wilson, again the mastermind of the Beach Boys, takes Rubber Soul home and listens to it and just can't believe the quality of this music, that every song on the album was a great original song. And it really turned him around and really made him work harder in the studio and work harder on his songwriting, and he came up with the album Pet Sounds, which you see here in this folder and hear two songs of. Pet Sounds had three great songs, Sloop John B, and possibly their greatest song ever, Wouldn't It Be Nice, then also God Only Knows. They also recorded Good Vibrations at this time, but it was not included on the album. Although some people wanted it on the album, Brian, Brian held, held it from release on this album. So we've got those great songs recorded at this time, Sloop John B, God Only Knows, Wouldn't It Be Nice, and some and some say one of the greatest song pop songs of all time, Good Vibrations. All Brian Wilson 
compositions except, except Sloop John B. But what Brian Wilson did in the studio was the most amazing part, that Brian Wilson could put together these incredible arrangements, especially if you listen to Good Vibrations, go on YouTube and listen to Good Vibrations. Just an, an amazing arrangement of music and also used all the, the top LA players, always used good LA, LA studio musicians to play on the Beach Boys songs. Again, the Beach Boys did not play very much of their own music. They sang a lot of the harmonies. They were great harmony singers. The three brothers had been singing together for years and really pulled off those harmonies incredibly well. And Brian would also uh, arrange incredible harmonies. But Brian learned very early on to rely on the great LA studio players. And there was a group of players called the Wrecking Crew, including Hal Blaine on the drums, who played on thousands and thousands of, of early rock hits, including Sinatra and Sonny and Cher and just about everybody else. And also Glenn Campbell, who went on to have a huge career of his own, played guitar on many of the cuts and then later toured with the Beach Boys as one of the members of the Beach Boys. So Hal Blaine and Glenn Campbell, Tony Tedesco, and, and who was the bass player? A female bass player at this time, which is very rare in the studio scene to have a female bass player, but her name escapes me. Carol Kay, not Carol King, Carol Kay on the bass. Great studio players. So this album had a great sound, a really great sound. The Pet Sounds had a great sound. and But Brian Wilson was very disappointed because it was not a success. He felt he just poured everything he had into this album. It was not a success. Unfortunately, Brian was suffering from some mental problems and fell further and further into drugs, did lots of amphetamines, speed, also started doing large amounts of LSD and marijuana and really withdrew from society and had many mental problems after this, refused to tour with the band. So the band would go out and tour without him and Carl Wilson, his brother Carl Wilson, the guitarist, singer, and, and Mike Love, the cousin, really took over the band. And later on, there were very many lawsuits. Mike Love could just had a hard time getting along with other people, kept suing Brian Wilson, saying that he'd written a lot of the lyrics. Goes on and on, really a sad story. And I don't believe they've ever really patched things up, although the lawsuits are over. And sadly, Dennis Wilson, the drummer, who was the only true surfer in the group, although they started off as a surf band, the, nobody was really a surfer except Dennis Wilson, the drummer. Dennis Wilson died tragically, actually drowned, quite ironic, probably had been drinking heavily and fell off a boat and, and drowned quite a few years ago. And then just recently, approximately 10 years ago, I believe, Carl Wilson passed away, but Mike Love is still out there touring and Al Jardine is still out there touring in two different groups. Brian Wilson, although supposedly he's gotten quite a bit better and does make an occasional appearance here and there and has done some recording, still is fairly reclusive. So the one great American band that, that tried to challenge the Beatles the Beach Boys and their great album, Pet Sounds. Again, listen to the songs I've got uploaded, and there's also a couple of very good videos on the making of these songs. You see the studio stuff that goes on. You see some great shots of, of what, the most famous studio drummer of all time, Hal Blaine. And also get on YouTube and find Good Vibrations, and sometimes called Brian Wilson's Mini Symphony. So we have the black music of Atlantic and especially Motown Records. We'll be talking about more next week and also the Beach Boys, the Young Rascals. Go and find some YouTubes of the Young Rascals doing Good Lovin', a great, great YouTube video of Good Lovin'. Their lead singer, Felix Cavalier, who plays the organ, a very soulful singer, one of the greatest white soul singers of all times. But then the American groups, the, the West Coast American groups, really came around later, and we'll talk about them in the psychedelic era. So the, Be the Beach Boys and Pet Sounds.